Today we are going to take a look at The Stranger by the heartthrob himself, Albert Camus, who I always want to say is Alfred Camus, but it's Albert Camus. Uh, I'm not so much a fan of, this is a philosophical novel, or novella, not very big, uh, and I'm not so much a fan of uh, Camus' philosophy uh, myself uh, in general, and I was looking to expand uh, my horizons a little bit and read this, and that's kind of where I was coming from. Uh, I do very much like the uh, Sartre versus Camus memes that appear like in philosophy meme uh, subculture or whatever. Uh, and um, so I thought I would give this a try. And this book was very interesting slash difficult for me to both rate and review. Um, also, quick note, it's sometimes published as The Outsider, uh, not The Stranger in English. Uh, what it does is... I think Camus... Uh, uh, description of a summary um of it he says something to the effect of um in a in society today if a man would not cry at his mother's funeral he would be executed and this is kind of an exploration of that kernel of the idea um the the opening line is like an absolute banger um let's take a look uh my mom died yesterday or my mom died today, or yesterday maybe, I don't know. Which is just this, it just very much throws you into this character that is just um, completely uh, detached slash sociopathic slash like kind of an absurdist, although I don't want to uh, speak too much to Camus' philosophy myself, not being completely, um, let's say, well-versed in it. Uh, but he just has this, perspective where just like nothing really matters uh it's all just whatever and so like even his mother's like death like doesn't face him and this is kind of where the book opens up with and um i'm going to somewhat spoil like the narrative because it's more of a philosophical book than a narrative um but he's just very callous um the main character's name is Merceau, i think is how it's pronounced um and uh eventually he ends up killing a man and he goes through the defense, and again, he's just this callous, like, strangeness. He, he can't express why he killed the guy other than, like, uh, the light shined off the guy's knife, and it, like, bugged him, right? And so he ends up killing the guy, and he's summarily executed, thus fulfilling Camus sort of, um, you know, if there were a man in society today who did not cry at his mother's funeral, he would be executed, type of thing. And the book is very uh, interesting to me. And to that extent, I actually really liked it. Uh, you know, I was surprised. It was a very novel type of um, read because you are occupying the perspective of basically this sociopathic character who um, isn't, like, evil. Like, when most people think of sociopath, they think of, like, someone who's, like, evil and, like... Um, or maybe you could describe this character as evil, but I wouldn't. They're not... Um, they're devoid of, like, any sort of good or bad. Uh, and it's this... Uh, man, it's so hard to nail this down, like, conceptually. It's not evil. It's just completely devoid of any sort of value judgment whatsoever. Um, because he's just come to the conclusion that, like, basically everything is meaningless. Um, although the character doesn't express that too, too much. Um, you know, in explicit means. But obviously it's... He serves as a mouthpiece for um, what I think is uh, Camus' like absurdism to some extent, um, and so uh, it's just a very fascinating to read from this perspective. I think getting into the ratings, uh, we'll start doing that because uh, a lot of what I have to say, like, kind of goes inside the ratings. First, for utility, I would just score it a 1. This isn't the lowest possible score, but I just don't think reading this book is useful, although it is quite a short read, and it might be interesting for discussion. I don't think it can... Um, I don't think it'll inform behavior in a, pos uh, in a, a useful way for, for the average person. So it's... Um, I can't rate it like high in utility, but I'm rating it quite high in novelty, uh, with a 7.5 because, um, you know, it, uh, one moment. Okay, I'm back. So the reason I'm rating it high in novelty is because the character's perspective is just so 
interesting and out there where they are they have no empathy um no empathy whatsoever or rather perhaps it's not that they can't see stuff from the other person's perspective but they can't make the other person's value judgments and so it's just all this this weird um like the interactions with his girlfriend uh i think slash fiance are just like incredibly interesting because his like his response is always like yeah i don't know i don't care sure whatever you know um but at the same time he's like pursuing this thing and um it's just you know the uh you're like clearly not rooting for him throughout the the story um but like I didn't feel like I was rooting against him either. I was just fascinated to watch how things would unfold for him. He wasn't like a villain. It wasn't he wasn't kicking puppies, uh, you know, because he didn't care to kick the puppies. Uh, for entertainment, I gave it a six. You know, it's a story. It's somewhat entertaining. It is like detached and strange and like doesn't necessarily push like the narrative buttons perhaps as well as it could like uh, if it were designed to be entertaining. It's designed to you know, convey philosophical ideas, and so it's not quite a storybook, like, proper. Um, yeah, I like to call lit storybooks to annoy my lit friends, um, but um, obviously it's literature, but uh, yeah. For style, I gave it a seven. Um, Kim Woo comments that he was trying to, like, emulate Hemingway's, like, uh, basic, like, simple straightforward type of like style um i could read like a passage like that gives a quick just i'm just picking a random page the sun was shining almost directly overhead onto the sand and the glare on the water was unbearable there was no one left on the beach from inside the bungalows bordering the plateau and jutting over out over the water we could hear the rattling of plates and silverware it was hard to breathe in the rocky heat rising from the ground and so it's just this basic straightforward sort of text um, you know, you get his, uh, you get his perspective, like, within the text, because it's all POV from, uh, Merceau, Merceau, I think that's how you pronounce, uh, it's all from his POV, and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a, it's a relatively strong style, uh, I liked it, um, for readability, I'd give it a six, I don't know, it doesn't seem, like, especially hard, nor especially difficult, um, Perhaps I scored, should have scored this a little bit lower. If it, it depends what the narrative is easy to read and follow, but perhaps extracting the philosophical ideas and reading between the lines throughout like the various parts in the text might be more difficult. And to some extent, perhaps I was unsuccessful in this. Um, you know, I was not particularly impressed, uh, philosophically speaking, with um, the piece. Uh, you know, I think it did convey like some sort of uh ideas about um the absurd and how you like <sighs> what it looks like when someone uh fully occupies the belief that nothing really matters and uh i found this ex exploration somewhat interesting but also and there's no like redemption at the end which I also thought was appropriate and good. Um, but I think that it was, other than that, it's like not, wasn't to me the most philosophically impressive. Although I do think uh, if I were to reread it, I think I would glean more and more from it. I don't think I like fully extracted everything from it. And so I, I think there's more to be unturned. I just, I just didn't get a lot from it on first read. Uh, for interest, I scored it an eight, and this is, this is definitely like the strongest category of, um, you know, where I would rate this book, uh, and uh, it was just very fascinating to get a much different perspective than you normally would get in any sort of, you know, piece of literature or narrative story or this sort of thing where you're. Uh, following this like sociopathic character and uh, sociopathic is probably not even the right word like to this absurdist character although Kamu might disagree with that uh like articulation like he's just following a character that would not cry at his mom's funeral and his like his thesis is the such a character could not survive in the world in our society they would just be executed at some point and so 
okay, that's, uh, reading his summary of the book, I found very interesting. Like, that to me was, which is the, the character who would not cry at his mother's funeral would be executed. Um, that was very fascinating to me that he, like, summarized it like that. Also, it's, like, uh, kind of a flippant stash, standoffish, like, summary, I think, of your book. But okay. Um, so for an overall score of a 5.92, which is kind of about where I would want to put it, you know, I didn't find it philosophically that impressive. It wasn't, like, the most entertaining as a storybook. Uh, it was very thought-provoking and interesting and novel, uh, and to that extent, that's where a lot of the, the rating... Um, comes in. Uh, as far as recommendations go, I don't know how widely I would recommend this. Um, I've had it recommended to me. I, like, in retrospect, like, I'm, or having read it, I'm, uh, <laughs> the, I'm perhaps less likely to take the recommender's advice. Um, and I, it just didn't quite hit for me. Like, um, Crime and Punishment, uh, work of Dostoevsky, uh, I think is kind of also an interesting, has some parallels with the character, at least at the beginning, uh, where the character in Dostoevsky is this, like, selfish nihilist that um, eventually sees the error of his ways, although I don't necessarily like the seeing the error of his ways, but, like, looking through his thought process where he decides where he's going to kill someone and he, like, justifies it to himself, like, that is interesting um, to me. Uh, and so, like... I don't think I would recommend this very widely to anyone. Um, and it might be better just to read, like, some of uh, Camus' like, more direct works. You know, like, um, it's been forever since I've read it, but The Myth of Sisyphus, uh, which admittedly I also was not that impressed with, uh, which is kind of, like, why I'm not a huge Camus fan. Because um, someone presented The Myth of Sisyphus to me uh, as, like, this, like, grand thing you know where um sisyphus he's uh sisyphus is a uh, from greek uh he's a character from like greek mythology that as punishment for i forget what his crime was but the gods have decided that for all of eternity he's gonna roll a rock up a hill and just when he gets to the top of the hill the rock rolls back down and he has to start all over again and so it's this endless punishment and so Camus argues, if I recall correctly, because this is what was a while ago, that Sisyphus, um, he can give his life meaning if he just imagines himself happy, um, which, to be fair, is probably like a flippant way of characterizing Camus' uh, perspective. But like, it just seems like as a as a piece of philosophy, it seems like uh, a little bit facile. Like I'm not saying he's wrong. Um, or that that would be the incorrect action, but, like, um, to act like this is some sort of grand perspective, I think, is a bit, it just, uh, didn't resonate with me. Although, perhaps I should go back and read The Myth of Sisyphus, although, not being too impressed with The Stranger, and remembering not being impressed with The Myth of Sisyphus, uh, probably not. Um, so, recommendations, it's like, it's really not gonna get there for me, um, like, I'm just never recommending this. I think um, if someone asks me how I liked it, they'd be like, oh, it was okay. It was, like, interesting in, like, X, Y, Z way. Um, I don't know. If someone asked me for, like, this very narrow, specific... I want to read about a character that is um, not really bad or evil, but is, like, uh, just completely devoid of any sort of value system. Uh... And I want to read from this character's POV. I'd be like, I got the book for you. But other than that, um, as far as discussion goes, does anyone else have a uh, a book or novel or story or whatever that occupies a character's POV that is very very interesting because the character's POV is like different? Um, like I know, I think the Sound and the Fury by Faulkner. Um, there's a character, I believe the name's Benji, where the character is, like, uh, you know, mentally disabled, and, uh, can't, like, he can't process time very well, or, like, understand difficult concepts, and my understanding, I have not read The Sound of the Fury, is that it's written from, like, that perspective of someone who's, like, mentally, uh, handicapped, and so, 
uh, you know, or a little slow, let's say. And so um, that's like kind of like a fascinating type of thing where you're writing a book from a perspective that is not, that is very non-standard, um, which is why I think this book is very interesting and novel is because it's writing from a perspective that's very non-standard, you know, this like uh, devoid of values type thing. And simultaneously, um, I think most any other book that is writing about someone who's devoid of like values is trying to like villainize them. And I don't think Camus is trying to villainize them. He's just trying to say like, look, this is what you get when this type of person's around. And he's not really making a value judgment about it, which is apt because this individual is just devoid of values. And so, you know, maybe I would recommend it here and there, but like, it would have to be like for a very specific reason, not like a general recommendation. But if anyone has any examples of other books that are like that, um, you know, like Dostoevsky's uh, Crime and Punishment's a little like that at the start, um, feel free to put them in the comments. And if you like this video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, YouTube algorithm stuff, share with a friend, um, take a five minute walk, because it's good for your health. Doesn't help me, but you know, might help you. Uh, and have a good day.